Hello everyone, and welcome back to BioScholar. We're starting an exciting new series where you'll learn how to classify organisms just like a scientist. So, what exactly do taxonomists do? They observe, compare, and group organisms based on shared characteristics. This process of classification helps us understand the diversity of life on Earth. Currently, one of the most widely accepted systems is the Five Kingdom classification, proposed by Robert H. Whittaker in 1969. According to this system, all organisms are divided into five kingdoms, based on three main criteria. Let's explore these criteria first, and then we'll begin classifying organisms together, step by step. To classify living organisms, scientists used three main criteria. The first is cell type whether the organism has prokaryotic or eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells are simple and lack a true nucleus. Their DNA floats freely in the cell. Eukaryotic cells, on the other hand, have a well-defined nucleus and membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria and chloroplasts. The second criterion is cellular organization, whether the organism is made of just one cell or many cells. Unicellular organisms perform all life functions within a single cell. Multicellular organisms have specialized cells grouped into tissues and organs. The third and final criterion is the mode of nutrition, how the organism gets its food. Autotrophs can produce their own food, usually by photosynthesis, like green plants. Heterotrophs depend on other organisms for food, like animals, fungi, and many bacteria. These three features, cell type, number of cells, and nutrition style, help us place organisms into the correct kingdom. Now let's see how scientists use these three criteria to classify organisms. Suppose we have an organism that is multicellular, eukaryotic and autotrophic means makes its own food by photosynthesis. Scientists place this organism in kingdom plantae. Now imagine an organism that is multicellular, eukaryotic but heterotrophic meaning it cannot make its own food. Based on these traits, it could belong to either kingdom fungi or kingdom animalia. So how do scientists decide? We look at how the organism gets its food. If it decomposes organic matter externally and absorbs nutrients through its body surface, it belongs to kingdom fungi. But if it ingests food, taking it inside the body and then digesting it, it belongs to kingdom animalia. This small difference in nutrition makes a big difference in classification. Next, let's take an organism that is unicellular, mode of nutrition may be autotrophic, heterotrophic, or even both, but eukaryotic. Then this belongs to kingdom protista. Now, what if the organism is unicellular, prokaryotic means no true nucleus. It can be either autotrophic or heterotrophic. This is a monaeron, placed in kingdom monera. Now, on this slide, you can see different sets of characteristics for various organisms. Your task is to carefully observe each one and guess the correct kingdom it belongs to, based solely on the traits provided. Let's see how well you can classify like a scientist.